Welcome back to our Twitch series. This is part four. It is a uh, slight tangent away from Twitch. We're actually not going to cover Twitch commands or Twitch in the slightest here, but we're going to cover a couple of logics nodes that are prerequisites for the next video where we plug in these new nodes back into our light setup. The goal of this is to make things a bit more modular so that you don't have to have big spaghetti logics nodes coming off of that one Twitch interface. So in this video, we'll go over the logic nodes required. It is a prerequisite knowledge. So if you know how these nodes work, then please skip this one. Um, in the next one, we'll plug in um, a modular setup that we'll build using these nodes. And then I'll finish the series off with uh, probably a final part where I show you the modular setup that's already within this world and how that works. So for this one, um, the nodes we're going to go over are the dynamic impulse receiver, the dynamic impulse trigger, and the with value variants of both of those. If you know how those work, free feet to skip to the next one. If you don't, stay right on here with me. Let's spawn them in the world. So we're going to start with the receiver because it's first in the menu, and then the trigger, and let's talk about them. So the dynamic impulse uh, trigger and receiver are a way to set up a wireless system between two distinct logic objects. So if you're familiar with logics, you can pack logics into separate distinct objects within a world. And this lets you communicate between them without linking up wires or doing anything crazy. So when I hit repulse on this input, it will run the trigger and it will send a pulse to anything that is tagged with the value here. To explain tagging, it's like targeting. So um, if I put one here i will target anything that has the tag one and so if i put this over here separately and i also name it one it means that this would trigger this the only thing that we've not got is a target the target is the slot where you'd like to start the um the triggering from you can start this from any slot in guns and um, other game modes, it's common to make this like the player that was shot. So when you shoot a gun, you will trigger like the damage logics set on the um, on the player. In Twitch commands, however, we commonly use the root slot here. So we're targeting the entire world. This is good for this case, but bad for other cases, because it means that we can target the entire world and say to the entire world, if you know about this switch command, please do something. Um, try avoid using the root slot here. It's always uh, more efficient to try and find exactly what you want to target. But for Twitch commands, it makes sense to target, um, target the root slot. So here we're going to go to slots and we're going to plug in the root slot here. And now we've got a working dynamic impulse trigger set. So you can see this here is not connected in any way to this. I am going to spawn a display node from this, and then I'm going to pulse this, and you'll see we get a value over there. If I change this to two, you'll see here that we don't get a value. But if I go ahead and spawn a receiver, and I set this to two as well, we will get a value on this one. If I duplicate this setup, so we have a two here as well, we will also get a trigger. So anything with this tag is called on the receiver end. In programming terms, you can think of this like a remote procedure call or a function call. If you're not familiar with those terms, you can also think about it like a, an IR remote or a, you know, a, a car door opener we're triggering stuff wirelessly by telling anything that's tagged with this to, to run these nodes are super powerful by themselves but there's a variant of them let's go through so we've got some room called the dynamic impulse receiver and trigger with value so let's spawn a trigger with value and then a receiver with value to talk about those so they're exactly the same as our previous setup so we'll need a root slot node in that they need to target a slot and they need to run and that they have a tag but they also have a value and this value can be any data type for the purposes of this tutorial we're just going to use a number and you'll see that turns green and i can send one so what happens here is i will send anything tagged with two the number one let's change this up so that it's a little bit clearer by saying uh do 
cool thing. So now what we're doing is we're saying trigger the do cool thing receiver with a value of one. You might view that as uh, do cool thing one or do cool thing brackets one if you're uh, familiar with programming. Um, that's equivalent to what we're doing here. You're basically passing along a value. On the other side, you can read that value from this output here. But you'll notice that it's pink right now. And that's because there is currently a bug with Neos, which is where the pink here is not easy to change. There is a way to um, make these nodes so that the pink is already gone, so that it already knows what data type it is. If you ever see pink, it means that the node is unsure what data type it's going to represent, and so it can't run correctly. To get around that in my public folder, and I'm going to turn on uh, my private UI once I get there, You'll see there's a logics folder, and in the logics folder there is a folder called dynamic receivers. And in here you'll find some dynamic receivers which I've created. Every time I need to create a new one, I create it, and then I put it in this folder for you to use. If we go along the list here, we're looking for one that has the green. So I'm going to select the green one, and you'll see dint. I've renamed it just to prevent myself from having to type that long, complicated uh, string. So I just call them d, and then the value type in those brackets there. So you'll see if you go along, this is, uh, you see here I was typing it and then I gave up. So D user, this is D string, D float, D in, D float three, a slot receiver, those are super cool. And then a Boolean receiver. So I'm gonna do a D int here. And you'll see that it is the dynamic receiver with value and the pink here is changed to green. So now if I wire up do cool thing again, hit this, you'll see here that we get a pulse. This value here will only be the value from the receiver for again, that impulse duration. So if you want to see it, you need to cache it in a variable or use it immediately. We'll cache it in a variable because we're taking a look at it. If I was using it, I probably wouldn't cache it in a variable. What we need in the node, we need write. So we want to do write into int and then display. So one, Let's change this to 125. So that's how you send a value between these two setups. This is super powerful. I do want to talk about one more aspect of it, which is when you can change the targeting here. To do that, what I'm going to do is change this setup so that it writes the value to um, a text object. So create text basic. And then we can get rid of the variable here, but we need to keep the right, inspect the text object. Oops. Inspect the text object again. We selected the world root for some reason. Pull an inspector for the text renderer and then go ahead and write text to it. Now oh, let's change to a string. Uh, we need to, that's fine. If you have something which is not a string and you're writing it to a string, go to operators, go to to string, and it will convert pretty much anything into a string. There we go. So now when I pulse this, you'll see this says 125. The reason we're doing this is so that we can pack up this logic into this text. So I can select this, set packing root, pack the logics away. Delete this and delete that. And now we have a portable copy of this, uh, this text object. The reason why I want a portable copy is to illustrate the um, targeting. So here, if I duplicate this so that we have two, you'll see there are two here in the, in the inspector. There's one and there's two. If I pull out a slot interface for the second one, 
and I changed the root slot targeting to be instead this, and pulse this with a different number, let's say 500. Only this updates, this one doesn't update. And that's because I'm targeting it directly using a slot reference here. You can also target it with things like find by child or a ray cast or something like that, which means that you can execute the write operation on this piece of text remotely um, based on you know other logic nodes that find slots. If I change this target to be the top one by dropping this in the world and then changing this to be up here, and then pulse again, you'll see that changes to 500. If I change this down to 400, you'll see again only that one changes, this one does not change. These are used pretty much everywhere in Logix these days, they're super cool. Um, the gun systems in most worlds, including my world deathmatch template, use them. Um, Gemini, which is the puzzle world I have, uses them. So they're not limited to Twitch um, commands. You will see them a lot in Twitch commands though, which will actually be the subject of the, the next video. We're going to take what we've learned here with dynamic impulse trigger with value and dynamic receiver with value and plug it into our existing lamp setup. That'll be part five. I'm sorry that there's so many parts, but again, I wanted to break this up so that it's, it's easy to understand. This one is isolated just to these nodes as they're a little complicated to explain. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll get back to you soon with part five.